Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm very, very, I'm feeling it. Cove Holden. The shock uh, knocked all the words out of you. Huh? How are you here? Um, I'm going to say, how are you here? Now I'm going to say the shock knocked all the words out of you. Surprise. Oh, look at his eyes. He's so, his eyes are so blue. I love it. I love blue eyes. He's so handsome. My boyfriend's so handsome. Surprise. His tone was easy and relaxed. It certainly was a surprise. You hadn't expected him to be within the state, never mind your own house. He hadn't answered how he had suddenly just appeared back in Sunset Bird, though to be fair, you'd been too astounded to actually ask the question. Thankfully, Cove took the hint from your stunned expression and began to explain. So... Oh, I love his voice too. And I love how he was smiling. He had a really big smile. I love that. He seems to be a lot more outgoing as well, which I love. I got in about 15 minutes ago. No one was home, so I figured I'd come in the usual way. Come up the- come up- I'd come so... in the usual way. The window. A smile- a small smile. That's not a small smile, that's a pretty big smile. I like that. A small smile had formed on his face. You were still staring at him, unable to blink in case he disappeared. You could still barely believe that he was really there, mere feet away from you. I left my bags in your backyard. I hope that's alright. That was when you truly understood. Covid comes straight to you upon getting back to town. You are his first port of call, taking precedence above all else. Even though you hadn't been in what he called, even though you hadn't been in when he called, COVID ensured that he'd see you at the earliest opportunity, rather than allowing his plans to change. That's so sweet of him. You laughed. The realization made you bashful. You shook your head in his antics. You stayed frozen. The shock yet to melt him. You walked over to join him. You ran to Cove. I would. I hadn't seen him in a while. I would run to him. You ran to Cove. Every second away from him was a moment too long. As you approached, Cove quickly hopped from the windowsill to meet you. You're too crazy. I'm so glad you're here. I missed you. Trouble's back in town. I can't believe my eyes. It's the most amazing man in the world. It's the most amazing man in the world. You, I didn't, you didn't need to say anything. Um, I'm going to say that by this point, if we've, been, if we've been together for years, I'd like to think that we have a pretty playful relationship. Trouble's back in town. You ruffled his hair. You wrapped him in a gentle embrace. You pulled him into a bone-crushing hug. You jumped into his arms. You smiled him. You kissed him. I think by this point I would have kissed him. You kissed him. Ah. He instinctively began to close his eyes as your face leaned in closer to his. You you did it on the forehead, you did it on the nose, you did it on the cheek, you did We've been dating for a while. We've been dating for a while. I'm pretty sure by now he would have been used to have, have being kissed on the lips. He did it on the lips. He met you part way and the two of you shared a gentle greeting kiss. You then stepped back a bit. Cove rubbed the side of his head and furtively glanced down. Though he couldn't help getting a little nervous still, he was beaming. I missed you. Even if he hadn't said it outright, you wouldn't have you would have gotten the message from his body language. Cove was grinning widely, his raised cheeks burring his eyes, which gleamed like hidden gems. But he looked at you as if you were the most exciting treasure of all. How was the trip? Cove's brow creased as he considered your question. He leaned in and kissed you again. Aww. After a long moment, he broke the kiss and tilted his face back just enough to speak, but not so much that your forehead stopped touching. <sighs> I hated it. Let's never be apart again, okay? He said that absolutely as a joke, an exaggeration, something that wasn't a real request, of course, and yet despite all that, it felt real. Your heart hammered in your chest, your head swam, cast adrift on the tide of thoughts and adrenaline. Cove smiled as if offering a silent apology for his sudden onslaught of tenderness but he let the words proudly hang in the air all the same. Cove told you about how his trip back had gone. Soon you'd even recovered enough to actually listen. His mom was doing really well. She had a project in the works that she was thrilled about, and as a result, Cove was going to be sticking around in Sunset Bird for the time being. Things were settled, as much as they could ever be. With Cove back once more, you felt at ease. Cove stretched his arms out over his head, his eyes on the window and the world beyond. The sun had set while you were busy reuniting. Well... I should probably get my stuff and see Dad. He glanced over to you with a familiar expectant look. Wanna come with me? You know I do. No, but I'll walk you downstairs. Sure, I can go for a little over for a little while. I'll say you know I do. Cool. Cool. Ko began to head to your bedroom door. You followed after him. You insisted on a piggyback ride. This is the type of relationship we have. Ko's a strong, athletic man. 
You insisted on a piggyback ride. It was a special occasion. It was just the normal thing in your relationship. It was just the normal thing in your relationship. Cove. He paused, turning to face you. I'm not planning on walking there. I'm not planning on walking there. Cove shook his head, the smile in his face implying that it was you and your senses he was questioning, not the request. He'd come to expect the latter, even if he didn't get why it, was, it held such appeal for you. All right. Okay. He crouched down just enough for you to hop on his back in a practice move. And there wasn't much of a difference in height between you. He'd, and he didn't need to bend down much at all. And with how often you'd done it, there was no trouble in climbing aboard the Cove Express. Cove straightened up with poise, accustomed to balancing someone over his shoulders. Cove carried you down the stairs. You had to duck down a couple times, the ceiling grazing against your elevated head. I'm assuming this is where, like, choosing what my height was is important for this part. Still, you safely reached the ground floor of your house. The door's gonna be in the way. Get off here so I can open it up. He bent down to let you slide safely off his back. Seeing things from your usual height was disorienting after getting accustomed to looking down at everything. In all the excitement of Coast's return, you hadn't even remembered the gift you'd prepared for when he got back. It would be best to give it to him now, before he left your house. Can you wait here for a little while? I got something for you. Cove tilted his head, intrigued. Really? Really? I really love his voice, his older voice. You nodded with some eagerness, trying to imagine how he'd react when he actually saw it. You bought Cove something special. The gift you'd chosen had been something you could buy. I would have made him something. The gift you'd chosen hadn't been something you could buy. It was... And the orange shell he'd been entranced with since you were kids. A white poppy from the hill behind your house. Something you'd made yourself. The $20 bill. This would be something I would give him. I remember the orange shell. I'm wondering what I would have made. Let me just see what the choices of something that I would have made yourself. Let me see what they would have been. You rush up the stairs to collect the gift you'd made for him. It was the end product of hours of labor, thinking about Cove, what he meant to you, and what would bring him the most joy. A scrapbook you... Oh, okay. This... Okay. It has to be this. Because in real life, in real life, I have made scrapbooks for my boyfriends. And I made a scrapbook, and I still make scrapbooks every single year to this day. When I first... So I made scrapbooks for my very first boyfriend. Um... And uh, I loved it. I loved making it. It was such a such a sentimental gift. Um, and when Colin and I started dating, I made a scrapbook every single year to commemorate, like the to document the past year of us dating. And then we eventually got married, and I've just continued making a scrapbook every single year. So it's I love it because it's literally the history of our family. I'd like to believe that maybe once I pass on, my kids will inherit them and they'll be able to look back at the beginning of our family and, you know, maybe pass it on to their kids and those kids and those kids who probably will not know who we are other than that was your, like, great-great-great-grandparents or whatever. So, a scrapbook you put together. I, yeah, I'm glad I checked. I would have, my gut reaction would have been the $20 bill, but this is more true to real life. Your heart skipped a beat as you picked it up, excitement growing as you looked down at the scrapbook. You hurried back down to Cove. You carefully made the trip, plus I feel like this would have been more meaningful to him, more than the orange shell or more than the $20 bill. It's poetic and they are meaningful, but I feel like a scrapbook would take up more of his time in a good way. You carefully made the trip back down the stairs. Cove looked up at you as you approached, not wanting to put it off any longer. You hopefully helped out your gift to him. It's a scrapbook. His cove's eyes widened as he took it in. That's... Did you make that for me? His words were faint. I did. Cove smiled, blinking rapidly as he shook his head. You went to that much effort? Heck yeah. He grinned, tearing his glossy eyes away from your present long enough to look at you. I can't believe you. I'll take really, really good care of it. Oh, look at him. He's crying. Oh, he cradled a gift in his fingers and he took it from your hands. It's irreplaceable. Cove rever reverentially laid the gift safely on the counter, but he didn't turn back to face you once he had ensured it was secure. Though his face was angled away from yours, you caught his eyelashes fluttering as if batting away tears. His throat bobbed as he swallowed bubbling emotions. 
You knew that Cove could be sentimental. The gift and all the memories and feelings tied up in it seemed to have taken a toll on him. When he began to sniffle, you felt the need to reach out. Cove? Vaughn. I can't. You just... Vaughn, I don't know what to do. He forcibly scrubbed it at his eyes like he was trying to push the tears that threatened to spill back in. Oh, Cove, it's okay. Do you need to cry? No. Nevertheless, tears had begun to spill down his cheeks. Even as he wiped them away, more took their place. I'm, I, love, I love guys who are not afraid to embrace their emotional side. Hi. Thank you. Can you just give him a kiss already? His voice quavered as he spoke, or at least hug him. Cove reached out. You gladly stepped forward to meet him. He laid his warm hands against your cheeks and brought his lips to you. You kissed Cove until the need for the air finally won out. His head spinning, you were glad the, of the security of Cove's hands. Even after your lips had parted, Cove remained close, his hands still framing your face. You're welcome. Don't worry about it. You're such a cryberry. You didn't need words to quietly accept his appreciation. You're welcome. Cove let out a steady breath. It was far removal from the shaky gasps that had accomplished his sniffles. The tears had dried. His eyes were a little red, but open and at peace once again. He smiled fully recovered. He smiled fully recovered from the emotion that had overcome him. <sighs> You're really seriously too nice to me. He smiled back. I don't think there's such a thing as too nice when it comes to you. Cove brushed his hand against the pale ghost of a scar on his arm. He was at a loss for what to do now. The clock ticked away, counting the seconds of silence. Once you had a chance to settle your thoughts, you figured you'd tell Cove the intriguing news. I meant to tell you earlier, I saw Shiloh today. Huh? Shiloh? Cove repeated the name, his expression blank. From when we were kids? Cove pondered for a moment. Oh, from when we were kids? Cove pondered for a moment, then snapped his fingers. Oh, he was the freckly boy from that first summer, right? The one who moved. I met a guy named Shiloh. He looked just like the Shiloh we knew, plus however many years. But he didn't remember, he didn't remember me and just left. Cove frowned. That's, uh, hmm. I don't know. Too bad I missed it, though you knew him better than I did. That was definitely true. Not only had Cove known Shiloh for a shorter period of time, but he and Shiloh had never quite gotten along. That's true. Not that they were enemies either, just kids who were only ever together because of other people they both knew. I wonder what Shiloh's up to these days. I don't have any idea. He didn't say much. Oh. Oh, well. That was everything you'd had. That's everything you had on that news item, so you moved on to the next big update. Also, you know the mean old neighbors? The ones who would always yell at us? He cringed, recalling those particular memories of back in the day was not pleasant for someone as, as nostalgic as him. Yeah, they're not coming. They didn't rent the condo this summer. Cove's jaw dropped. You didn't blame him. The elderly couple had been an, in had been an institution for as far back as you could remember, long predating Cove's arrival. Even now, as a teenager, you found your neck prickling as you walked by their condo, half expecting a scolding for breaking, breathing the wrong way in the vicinity of their vacation home. It was strange to think of that coming to an end. Wow. Cove blinked, clearly struggling with the idea in the same way you had. Mm. I didn't see that coming. People being gone, people coming back. It feels like I've missed out, missed a lot. This has been a busy summer already. Mm. Well, you haven't missed, at the, missed the fireflies. They haven't shown up yet. Well, that's something, and we better not get left behind. There's still stuff to do. You nodded. As soon as you left your house, Cove bent down to let you climb back onto his back for the last part of the journey. It seemed that no sooner had the sun had the night begun that it was already at an end, and the dawn of a new day was soon upon you. The next morning, your belly was full of breakfast, and you were in a pleasant mood. You hoped the rest of the day followed suit. Later, you were meeting up with your friends, Cove, Miranda, and Terry to get, to get into town. Terry. I don't know if I remember Terry. It was all in short notice, but that was because everyone was just so excited that Cove was finally back home. Having a nice daydream? You blinked, pushing all your thoughts away and returning to reality. Your mom was watching you with a teasing smile. All right. So, what's on the agenda today? I'm meeting up with some people. Well, I hope you and your friends have fun. Don't get into too much trouble. She winked at you. You knew both of your moms wanted you to enjoy every bit of the summer before all the big changes started. I'll try, That'd be great. but but before you go gallivanting around the town, could you bring the mail in? I'm finishing up putting the dishes away from over here. All right, thanks very much. 
As soon as you were outside your front door, you couldn't help but see Cove and his dad standing around in the road. They noticed you too. Dad's hardly changed a bit, although his pecs are still looking pretty good. Hey. Hey there, Mr. Vaughn. Cove's dad is really kind of rad. Cove's dad is really kind of rad. Sorry. Spoof on Stacy's mom. Stacy's mom has got it going on. Hey, Cove. Hi. Oh, it's Cove. Now that's Cove. Hi. Good timing. You should come join us. You waved at them. You hugged him. You gave him a high five. You gave him a nookie. You ruffled his hair. You kissed him. Um, I'm gonna hug him. I, I don't want to keep kissing him every single time. Hugging him sometimes is good too, especially like in the presence of his dad. Melting into his arms, Cove held you tightly until you were ready to let go. His eyes shone brightly with so much adoration that you feared your heart might stop. Even after all this time, being with him hadn't gotten any less thrilling. You noticed Mr. Holden was taking in the scene of you and Cove with a self-satisfied smile. Cove followed your line of sight and shot his dad an unimpressed look. For a moment, Mr. Holden seemed like he had a thought dancing on the tip of his tongue, but he decided to keep it to himself. So... So, what are you up to today? As far as I know, nothing too much. Me and Cove are meeting some friends in town later. Sounds like a plan to me. Yawning, Mr. Holden stretched his, arm over his arms over his head. My boy and I have just been waiting around to see what the new neighbors are like. It was definitely his idea. I don't know how you're not interested in this. It's big news. Besides, it'd only be polite to greet the new folks in town. Maybe uh, uh, maybe it'll be a single dad and his son. You could, you, you've you been here too long if seeing a new person rent a condo is what you consider an exciting development. Yes, I'm dying to see the newcomers. Your response was just a shrug. I don't want to meet them. Well, anyone has to be better than the last tenants. Again, extroverted. Yeah, I'm dying to see what the newcomer, who the newcomers are. I We're about to move to a new house, because we bought a new house. Bought a house from first time, first time buying a house, heck yeah. And of course, one of the things as an extrovert that I'm worrying about is, I hope our neighbors are cool, or at least nice. Cool neighbors would be awesome. Nice neighbors, at minimum, that'd be great. Vaughn gets it. Cove raised an eyebrow. Really, you too? You know me too well, Nekov, to ask that question. Yeah, it could be anyone. The beach attracts all kinds of people. Hopefully it's not another Jeremy wannabe. Cove thought about your words for a few seconds and then nodded understandingly. I guess. I guess. Mr. Holden took one more glance at the currently vacant building and sighed dramatically. When he turned back to you and Cove, his whole body seemed deflated. <sighs> There's no sign of them, and I still need to head over to work soon. Cove gave his dad a few reassuring pats on the back. Okay, I promise to keep an eye out. I can text you if anything happens. Really? Of course. Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, only until I have to meet up with Terry and Miranda. Would that still work? With a wide grin breaking out of breaking on out on his face, Mr. Holden looked absolutely thrilled to have his nosiness enabled. That works. He moved to firmly place both hands on Cove's shoulders, fixing his child with a firm stare. Son, you are truly my you are my true ally in this world. Mr. Holden stood up straighter, letting Cove go. He looked in reinvigorated. Okay, with that settled, I'll go make some money. Make some money. That's always been the one thing I do best. Mr. Holden headed off to the garage with a big wave goodbye. Cove smiled the whole time. You both watched his dad. You both, the whole time you both watched his dad leave. You really like Mr. Holden. Mr. Holden was one of your favorite people. Cove's dad was kind of a bother. You have mixed feelings of Mr. Holden. I would say we all really like Mr. Holden. You had for a long time. As soon as he was out of sight, Cove sighed lightly. Are you okay? I mean, if he's gonna be our our future father-in-law, so that's it'd be great if you liked him a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to waiting. Guess I'll be hanging around the street a while. Good luck. See you later. I'll stick around to see the new neighbor. I can wait with you. Why don't I stay? Why don't I? Why don't I stay to see to see the new neighbor and keep you company? Curiosity about the new tenant was getting the better of you, and you figured that that the wait wouldn't be too much longer. And besides, you just couldn't leave Cove. Really? Of course. I like keeping you company, remember? He stared at you at a moment, at you a moment, smiling softly and thinking about his response. Me too. I like that too. Cove put his hands on your shoulders. His thumbs absentmindedly moved in a soothing circle. The look on his eyes was much firmer. He was serious. Vaughn, you are my true ally in this world. 
That got a fair amount of chuckles from you. He grinned, the stoicism fading to amusement. Thank you. You're always good to me. You're always good to me. You're lucky to have me. You're lucky to have me. It's no problem. I can't help myself. You laughed. You shook your head. You simply shrugged. Um... You simply shrugged. You weren't, really weren't sure how to respond to that, and you could tell Cove was watching you carefully. The smile on his face reached his eyes, and it made you feel electric. And then he let, you, he let go of you. Cove stepped over to his front porch steps, lazily taking a seat and leaning back on his arms. Our watch begins. Nodding in agreement, you joined Cove on the front porch steps. You both sat there in a comfortable familiarity as you settled in for the waiting game on the new tenants. The neighborhood was quiet, and you sighed contently, contentedly, closing your eyes and feeling the light breeze. Eventually, you both perked up at the sound of a car. A taxi followed the noise, turning onto your street. Cove's eyebrows raised at the sight, and he sat up straight on the stoop. Oh? Well? This has to be them, right? Yeah, it's gotta be. You leaned forward, sitting on the edge of the front step. You couldn't wait to finally put an end to the, to the suspense and get a new look at the new neighbor. And get a look at the new neighbor. The taxi pulled to a stop, as you expected, in front of the now empty condo. It was on the same side of the streets, street as your house, as your house, a few buildings further up. Without getting to his feet, Cove tried leaning and tilting his head to get a view of the passenger door as it opened. The single occupant exited the cab. Huh? You could feel what Cove was in that moment. After the last renters, this new visitor was definitely not exactly what you'd expected. Huh. It was a young man. Had to be close to your own age. He was dressed fully in an electric black, white, and gray outfit. Even his side swooping hair matched his, if this matched the scheme. I do like his hair. The only other pop of color was from something that couldn't easily be fashioned to, into submission. A pair of dark brown eyes, which you caught when he looked over at his audience. Hello, folks. Who might you be? Um... We're, na the, we're the neighbors. The smile already prominent on his face curled further. It was cocky, but you didn't get the impression it meant something adverse. Hallelujah! You and Cove shared a familiar look with one another, bewildered even further. The color-coordinated man, color-coordinated man, left it there. However, and with a, however, and with a firm click, he shut the door out on, of his side of his ride. Then he turned his back to you and to retrieve a large, unsurprisingly, black suitcase out of the tr out of the trunk. Continuing on with his own business, he strolled forward and lightly tapped the driver's side window with his knuckles, asking for them to roll it down. When it opened, he leaned down and rested his arm on the edge. You assumed he was thanking the driver for getting him there, considering he, s he slipped him a tip during the brief chat. They shook hands, and then he pushed himself up and away from the taxi with both arms, giving the driver room to leave. The taxi pulled away, rolling carefully down the road and out of sight, around the corner. The new renter officially arrived. He left his suitcase on the ground, out of the way of the street, and sauntered over your way with the confidence of someone who had been invited to join. Cove finally stood up to greet this person. You followed suit. Oh, Cove's still taller than him. Excellent. I'm Baxter Ward. It's excellent to meet you, neighbors. You were standing on the side he was, he was approaching from. When Baxter got close enough, he offered his hand to you first. He kind of creeps me out a little bit. He's got that, he's got that Two-Face, like Batman Two-Face kind of thing going on with that shirt. You shook it. You offered him a low five. You offered to low five him. You held your arms open to offer a hug instead. You kept your distance. I'm gonna shake it for- I'm normally a big hugger, but it probably would be too overwhelming if I just hugged him immediately. I'll sh you shook it. Baxter gripped your hand firmly to give a satisfying shake. I'm Baxter. Hi Baxter, I'm Vaughn. Hey Vaughn, I'm, I'm, I'm quite keen on getting to know you better this summer. We could be good friends. From the our other side, Cove made a sudden sputtering noise. And you are? He lifted his hand out to the Cove next. Cove shook his hand, still eyeing Baxter carefully. I'm Cove. Cove's my boyfriend, is what I would say. Baxter's whole demeanor lit up for an unknown reasons. His eyes shone as he studied Cove a moment. Really? Now wait, is that a nickname or your real name? It's just my name. Cove spoke mildly, having given that explanation many times in the past, but it clearly charmed Baxter all the same. He tossed his head to one side with a laugh. Your parents knew exactly what they were doing. I can't imagine a more fitting name for the face I'm seeing. Cove, that's gorgeous. I... It's... What? It's really not. 
No, I agree, it suits you. Hey, only only I get to bluster him. That's a lot considering you talking to a stranger, Baxter. You didn't know what to say. He's taken. No, I agree, it suits you. Not Nice bad. to see someone else knows. The impact might have faded for you living with this it this long, but I promise to the onlookers it's a knockout. Cove couldn't face either of you after that. His cheeks were quiet, quickly turning ri bright red with embarrassment. You noticed that Baxter looked apologetic over Cove's increased discomfort. I'm sorry, I wasn't intended to... It wasn't intended to be to mean more than it did. I like your name, but you don't have to mind that. I'm patently against stepping on anyone's toes. He chuckled to himself. It seemed like there was some extra meaning hidden there in his words, and you noticed that Cove raised an eyebrow, picking up on that too. Baxter didn't even didn't even open his eyes to see your faces to know he had some fi filling to do. He stood up straighter, striking a slight pose with the position of his feet. I'm a ballroom dancer, hence the phrasing. Oh, I don't know much about dancing, but that's pretty cool. It's not hard once you get the basics down. Cove didn't look convinced at all. Baxter took that as a cue to keep talking. Well. Well. He grinned in a way that was rapidly becoming familiar to you. If either of you are ever looking for a partner, I'm available. Cove peeked at you, smiling softly. You felt his familiar touch as he squeezed your hand for a moment. I already have a partner. Vaughn is the only one I'd want to dance with, sorry. He's my boyfriend. That's right. I kind of like the fact that Cove is like establishing, establishing us as boyfriends. You're both together? Yeah, we are. Now that's crushing, but makes sense. I got here too late. Should have taken a semester off sooner. I get it. No, I'm, I'm afraid we've been, we were dating longer than that. So sorry, bud. That's a joke. Really, I didn't mean to intrude on anything you have with the offer. I'll take you up on that offer sometime. I'd rather not. You didn't answer the question. Exactly. Cove is the guy I dance with. I'll take you up on that offer sometime. I'd rather not. You didn't answer the question. Exactly. Cove is the guy I dance with. Baxter smiled and nodded understandingly, letting the subject go. After that, there was a lull in conversation, and Cove attempted to fill it. So... Um, what made you decide on Sunset Bird? Oh, well, my parents rented a condo, so I had a place to stay while I'm off for a semester from college and not living in the dorms. Oh, he's already a college student. There was a playful glint in Baxter's eyes as he continued. This guy is really, like, making me uncomfortable. Honestly. Ideally, they wanted to send me somewhere that, was, that wasn't too exciting, but lucky for me, they picked the wrong street, considering the two of you live here. Baxter then preemptively lifted his hands up in front of his chest, giving the gesture for meaning no harm. It's nice not to be the only one my age around the neighborhood for an entire summer. Nothing more. That was a story you had heard from before. The same one as when Lonely Cove and his dad moved in, moved in all those years ago. Cove wasn't relenting, wasn't relating still. You could have phrased it like that in the first place. Hmm. I don't feel the need to keep words of praise to myself, but they're not romantic come-ons. I see that you two are very much a committed pair. I'd like to be friends if we can, but that's all. It's okay. It doesn't bother me. I'd appreciate it if you didn't do that with me. I'm finding it pretty entertaining. You probably annoy a lot of people. You stood there and sure how to react. I would probably say I I'm not really sure how to react. Baxter looked at you and smiled apologetically. I'll keep it in check. Shifting his weight to his other foot, Baxter tried to move forward. So... so, which condo is yours? How long have you been living together? Oh, no. Cove sputtered again and unintentionally a laugh escaped you. That's... We're, we're both your neighbors, but we live in different houses with our parents. As if second nature, the two of you pointed to your homes. The buildings directly across the street from each other. Baxter's eyebrows raised at that. Your neighbors who started dating? What a couple of lovebirds. You're the backbone of romantic society. <laughs> Honestly, I hope you never break up. If you can make it work, there might be a chance for the rest of us. You knew Cove well enough to tell, the, to tell there was a little bit of amusement in his expression, but he sighed in exasperation. After that, you had no doubts about his claims of being complimentary. You shook your head at it. Too much again? Kind of. Well, if either of you are free, I'd be thrilled to hang out this summer. But we can save their schedule talk for later. I should get my things inside. Sounds like we we're going to have a bunch of moments, possibly, with Baxter. He gave a small nod of, of the head and flashed you both a dazzling smile. Goodbye. Goodbye for today. Bye. Cove gave a small wave as well. Bye, Baxter. See you. Baxter then turned on his heels 
and strolled back to his suitcase, picking it up and bringing it, in, bringing it to his condo. You and Cove were silent as Baxter unlocked the door and disappeared inside the house. With him completely out of the scene, Cove let out a long breath. Well, I don't know how I'm gonna explain that guy to my dad. 